a series of videos on the fundamentals of pharmacokinetics. You will find these videos useful by themselves, but they are nevertheless best viewed alongside a textbook, Clinical Pharmacokinetics from the Beginning. It's available on Amazon and priced for a student budget. The textbook and these videos are themed around an imaginary drug called Pretendolone. Drug concentration time data are used to build a pharmacokinetic profile. If you want more information on how this works, see video 1 and introduction. Video 8a, the first of two videos on designing repeat dose regimens. In this video, we will look at intravenous administration. Before we start, however, a disclaimer. I am not a pharmacist. I am not a physician. The video is a general explanation on how to design repeat dose regimens. It is in no way advice in respect to any particular drug. In the previous videos, we looked at the pharmacokinetic parameters using a single dose administration of pretendolone. We are now going to use those parameters in the design of repeat dose regimens. Some drugs are intended to be taken as single doses, but probably the majority of drugs are intended to be taken as repeat administrations. For example, drugs used to control blood pressure can be taken over very long periods of time, years or sometimes even a lifetime. Let's compare the plasma drug concentration versus time curves for single and repeat dose administrations. This uh, plot is somewhat idealised, but here is the familiar curve for a single dose. We are using oral administration here as our example. The drug will be absorbed from the gastrointestinal tract until it reaches some maximum drug concentration, after which it will be eliminated over time as the drug concentration falls away. Now, for a repeat dose situation, the drug is still absorbed from the gastrointestinal tract, so you get this rising drug concentration. But then the intention is to repeatedly administer that drug to therefore hold the concentration steady rather than seeing the drug concentration fall away, as is the case with the single dose. In fact, the intention is to try and hold that drug concentration as steady as possible. And that is known as the steady state concentration. Before we start to design a repeat dose regimen, let's just clarify some terms and definitions. There will be a drug concentration above which you do not want to go. If the drug concentration goes above this level, then you are likely to see unacceptable side effects. The patient is not going to be happy. That level is known as the minimum toxic concentration, or MTC. There is also a drug concentration below which you do not want to go. If the drug goes below that concentration, then it starts to rapidly lose any therapeutic effect. That concentration is known as the minimum effective concentration, or MEC. Between the MEC and the MTC, there is the therapeutic window. You want to hold your steady state concentration somewhere within that therapeutic window. We can put some numbers on this for pretendolone. Let's say that the MTC is 150 nanograms per mil 
and the MEC is 10 nanograms per mil. And we want the steady state concentration to be 50 nanograms per mil. Where have these concentrations come from? Have I just pulled them out the air? Well, you know, in some ways I have just pulled them out the air, but there is a logic behind them. We're not going to cover that here. If you want to know more about the, how the MTC, MEC and steady state concentrations are chosen, there is a discussion in the textbook and I'll leave it to that. These two videos on repeat dosing consider two routes of administration. The oral route, which we will cover in the next video, and the intravenous route that we are covering here. By intravenous route, I do not mean continuous injection. We're not going to stick needles in our patients continuously. Instead, we are going to use continuous intravenous infusion. By using continuous intravenous infusion, we can control the rate that the drug goes into the bloodstream very precisely. Units for the rate of infusion is the mass of drug per time, for example, milligrams of drug per hour. We want to infuse that drug in order to achieve our steady state concentration. The other consideration that we must make is how long does it take to reach the steady state concentration. When we infuse the drug, it takes time for that concentration to build up to reach the steady state concentration, and we need to know how long that is going to take. So where do we start? Well, let's start with the rate of drug delivery in order to achieve our steady state concentration. The rate the drug is delivered in units, for example, of our milligrams per hour is known as the maintenance dose rate or MDR. The MDR is delivered into the bloodstream. It's going into plasma. The moment the drug gets into the plasma, then it's going to start to be eliminated. And removal of the drug is determined by the clearance of the drug. And so consequently, the steady state concentration is an equilibrium between the MDR and clearance. We can therefore say that the MDR equals the steady state concentration multiplied by the clearance. For pretendolone, the clearance is 22 litres per hour. We know that our desired steady state concentration is 50 nanograms per mil. Pop that into the equation and we end up with an MDR of 1.1 milligrams per hour. So if we continuously infuse our drug with an MDR of 1.1 milligrams per hour, we should reach a steady state concentration of 50 nanograms per milliliter. How long does it take to reach that steady state concentration? This depends entirely upon the half-life of the drug. The MDR plays no part in this calculation. Here is a generic table. On the left-hand side, there are the number of half-lives. And on the right-hand side, there is the percentage of the steady state concentration achieved. And so you can see that typically it takes around five half-lives of the drug to reach the desired steady state concentration. So to summarise, we have our drug being continuously infused with an MDR of 1.1 milligrams per hour and that will achieve a steady state concentration of 50 nanograms per mil. The half-life of pretendolone is 5.7 hours 
and therefore we can expect the steady state concentration to be reached in 28 and a half hours. There is a bit of a problem with that because in the majority of cases, a patient is not going to be happy being hooked up to an intravenous line for over 24 hours. I have some personal experience of this. I once went to the United States on a business trip. I was traveling from state to state and from meeting to meeting. I was really busy, but I contracted an ear infection and I did not get it treated. Eventually, I started to feel really quite ill and I got a temperature. I then went to the doctor who sent me to the hospital where I got an intravenous infusion of antibiotics followed by a course of oral antibiotics. Now, let's say that pretend alone was the antibiotic. I would not want to wait around 28 and a half hours for that antibiotic to reach its steady state concentration. Mostly because I would want the concentration of antibiotic to reach the steady state as quickly as possible in order to kill off the infection. So how do we deal with a situation like this? Well, we use what is known as a loading dose. Let's look at what a loading dose is. We know that if we have an MDR of 1.1 milligrams per hour, we, we will reach a steady state concentration of 50 nanograms per milliliter. Well, we can add to this dosing regimen a loading dose. The loading dose is essentially a single injection of the drug. That injection will raise the drug concentration in plasma up very rapidly. If it's a single injection, it might do that in just a few minutes. Once the drug concentration has rapidly come up to around its steady state concentration, 50 nanograms built in this case, you then administer the drug by continuous infusion at the MDR to maintain the steady state concentration. The obvious question is, how is the loading dose calculated? To understand this, we return to video six, where we looked at the volume of distribution. If you're not sure about volume of distribution, go back to video six and refresh your memory. But I did give a definition in that video as it is the apparent volume, volume of plasma, necessary to contain the total amount of administered drug in order to achieve the observed plasma drug concentration. So from that we conclude that if we know the volume of distribution and our desired plasma drug concentration, then we can work out the mass of drug, that is the loading dose, that has to be given to reach the steady state concentration and that is the formula that calculates the loading dose. The volume of distribution for pretendolone is 180 litres so if we pop that into the equation we find that our loading dose is 9 milligrams. So we give a loading dose of 9 milligrams very rapidly, that will raise the drug plasma concentration up to 50 nanograms per mil. And then we maintain that concentration as the steady state concentration by administering the drug with an MDR of 1.1 milligrams per hour. That's all we're gonna cover on continuous intravenous infusion. In the next video, we're going to have a look at repeat oral administration.